Hi, I'm Andrea Ling. Um, I'm an architect and an installation artist, and I work in the field of biodesign. So November 9th, 1989, I was still a child in Canada. Um, I was aware of the Berlin Wall falling through school and through my teachers and my parents uh, talking about it and what they had seen on the news. Uh, November 9th happens to be my brother's birthday, so we were probably eating chocolate cake somewhere. Uh, when I was five, I wanted to be a medical doctor, and uh, I changed that by the time I got to university, and I decided I wanted to go to architecture school instead. So my research breaks the wall of waste. Um, my project was a response to Ginkgo Bioric's question or their challenge on how to design a world without waste. And my response was to recognize as an architect and a designer, um, all I do is create waste or what will be waste. Um, and so if that's the case, then I need to design waste as nature does as um, inputs for future construction and renewal and organization rather as simply the output of breakdown and destruction. Design by Decay, Decay by Design, leverages the organizational capabilities of decay as a design opportunity, allowing us to relink production and consumption with the disposal of material objects. With the assistance of Ginkgo scientists, this project explores how to organize decay using enzymes, fungus, bacteria, and other biological agents as ways of composing and decomposing matter at the same time it was taking a step back and, and asking really, really interesting questions um, around that like bigger question of how biology, how waste exists in biology or how decay is part of biology um, and how decay and renewal work together. My base material system included biocomposites of chitin, cellulose, and pectin derived from the exoskeletons of shrimp, tree pulp waste, and fruit skins. These materials can be combined in different ratios to form different bioplastics that are environmentally responsive. I combine enzymes derived from fungus, bacteria, and human saliva into the bioplastics, using the enzymes to transform the material rather than simply destroy it. This was degradation as a fabrication process, and was done with the guidance of Dr. Josh Dunn. With Kyle Kenyon, I was able to test different strains of streptomyces on my biocomposites. Streptomyces is a common soil bacteria and secondary decomposer, which produces vibrant pigments and jasmine, the compound responsible for soil smell. Finally, with Dr. Mingyo Wu, a fungal engineer, I used Aspergillus niger, a black mold, and Trichoderma variety, a green mold, in fungal co-cultures to transform different materials and objects. This included degrading patterns into bioplastics and coloring wood carvings designed with increased surface area for maximum colonization. My goal in using these material systems and these biological agents was not to make a low carbon footprint object or upcycle waste. Rather, it's to support a different mode of design where the process of making and breaking is provisional and not just consumptive, and to redistribute value away from permanent materials that destroy ecosystems onto transient ones that restore them. One thing that I think is interesting about the notion of a circular economy is it leaves something out. We don't want to just recycle and reuse and degrade everything we produce. But there's a tremendous remediation part as well. So in addition to this cycle, we actually want to be pulling a bunch of things that are already in the environment. So microplastics being a prime example, you know, back into this cycle or even shuffle, shuffle some of it out of the cycle to the point where it's stored carbon once again. What is waste? Like, are, is, are there, should there be waste at all? <laughs> or can we really make those closed loops? Like, what, what is the carbon cycle of the future going to look like um, yeah. when we're not pulling oil out of the ground and turning it into trash? Um, like, are, are there other ways fundamentally of approaching the material world? Um, and, and how would we make that process happen? How I hope this might benefit society is um, to 
kind of move our systems of production away from you know our currently very extractive and exploitative systems towards restorative ones um, and push industry to think about ways of making and disposing um, things that are perhaps slower and sloppier um, than their currently their these um, mass manufacture or industrial techniques that we use um, but in the long term probably much more sustainable um, and much more resilient. So there are a lot of unanswered questions in the work still, um, varying from you know, how to get a more pre precise process, uh, more like how to, to ex exert more influence on, on um, what these agents are doing. Um, and then also the other, on the other side is to how to be okay with unexpected results because you are using um, biological agents with their own kind of autonomy.